Hi everyone, it's Alessio Rastani of Leading Trader. Hope you're well. I want to quickly visit our old friend Twitter. And the reason I'm looking at Twitter is because, of course, I'm sure you've heard about it. It's in the media, and I'm sure your friends have been talking about it too. Uh, I'm sure your friends have been bragging to you about how much they're looking forward to making money from buying Twitter. But uh, really, I want to point this out. And the reason why this chart looks a bit weird is because Twitter has only been around for about four days. Okay, so it was launched on a Thursday. So this stock is still in its infancy. So we haven't got a lot of data on it yet. But uh, what I want to actually point out here is, and I'm, uh, quite an important point here to mention, is the next time one of your friends you know, mentions uh, about Twitter and how much they're looking forward to buying Twitter, ask them if they know what Form S1 is. And I guarantee you that most of your friends, most people you know, will not have a clue about anything about S1. All right, and this is quite important because if you're gonna buy any stock, especially if it's an IPO, brand new stock, whatever, you need to know about the company's S1. So let me just show this to you guys. What you wanna do is go to a website, and this is the website you wanna to go to, which is, you see the the, um, the domain over here is sec.gov. This is the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission website, okay, also known as Edgar, all right? So what you wanna go there, and on this website, you wanna click this button, this little, link here search for company filings click that all right and then you want to click the first link here company or so just bring this over here it says company or fund name ticker symbol click that over here as well all right now over here on the right hand side it says fast search so you want to type in the symbol or even a company the company name over here is twitter i'm just going to put the symbol here uh t w t r there you go and press enter and there you have it. So you can see Twitter comes up here on this page. Okay, now what you want to do next is just uh, scroll down the page, and there you go. S1 is the form. This is a form that is submitted by the company to the SEC. Gives you valuable information, financial information about the company. So click this document, there you go, S1. All right, and then form S1. Just click this first link, this is form S1, there you go. And there you have it. So this is the actual form that has been submitted by the Twitter company to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, what you wanna do next is, I wanna bring this a little bit over here so I can scroll down this page. Okay, just scroll down this page a little bit so we can get, so you can see this is Twitter right here. There you go. And I'm gonna scroll down, scroll down. All right, what you wanna do is bring it to the section, ah, here we go to do with the financial information of the company. All right, here we go. Seems to have found it. There it is, a summary of consolidated financial and other data. And some interesting stuff here. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna have to move this around because I can't shrink the screen, unfortunately. What you will notice though on the left-hand side is these particular headings. This is revenue and it says cost and expenses, uh, total cost and expenses. Okay, so all this stuff is actually here. Okay, and you can see that these are the expenses going to um, bring it over here from 2010, 2013, all right? Now let me show you something interesting here. All right, so let's just bring our pen and uh, point this out to you folks. So this is how much the company has been making in revenue from 2010 to 2013, all right? And notice, by the way, these numbers are all uh, in thousands so you want you want to add a three zeros at the back of this that's 28 million by the way so the companies make you know in 2010 for example the company made 28 million right but in terms of costs and expenses it actually lost 95 million as you can see here all right so bottom line here and you can see over here again in 2013 and you see actually continue this for every year in terms of revenue and how much the company actually paid out in losses. I mean, notice over here, 106 over here was the revenue, 233 in expenses, 316 came in, uh, 394 went out, you know, in terms of losses. And again, same goes for 2013, 253 million revenue, 316, you know, in cost and expenses. You know, this is a company that's never made any money, folks. It's never made any profits. Why and why would I want to put any money or any investment in this kind of company? I really can't say anything more than what I'm showing to you here. But really, going back to the um, uh, the stock here, uh, Jim Cramer, uh, who hosts a show on Mad Money on CNBC, he recently said that the company's true valuation comes to about 26 
So $26.5. I actually agree with Jim Cramer on this. I do believe that that's correct valuation of Twitter is about $26.5 not what it's going for right now at 4190 and not what it peaked at $50. All right? I there's no way I would pay there's no way anybody could force me or persuade me to buy Twitter at 4190, let alone $50. Okay? I I I personally wouldn't even touch this stock with your money, not even with my mother's money. As I wrote to you guys last week in my article, most web stocks have a habit of falling by 50%, in other words, having in value, within their first five to six months, okay? So if, the, if it peaked at $50, all right, that means what you do is you do say $50 divided by two, I'm looking for this stock as a buy at say $25, or actually this valuation here from Jim Cramer, 26 and a half. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. I wouldn't touch it until it kind of goes back to that kind of uh, that level there. All right, and um, in case you're wondering, so what do you do in this situation? Do you short this? You could short it if you want to. I wouldn't risk a lot of money on it if you're shorting this. But what you could do is, you know, just do a Fibonacci retracement from the lows to the highs. Uh, wait for a pullback. So what you could do over here is say, okay, if this stock here pulls back to, let's say, the 50% level at 44.75, you could short it here, put your stop loss just above the 61.8, maybe just put above this high here, okay, uh, just about 46.47 here, and then look for a move lower. All right, but that's what I would do. But otherwise, if you, if you don't want to short it, just wait, be patient, and then buy it cheaper. For more information about trading the markets, whether you're a beginner or advanced trader, visit my website, leadingtrader.com. Thank you.